The Council of Europe, uh, the progenitor of the European Convention on Human Rights, has a parliamentary assembly of nominated members of parliament from each of the parliaments of its, I think, 47 states. Uh, and PACE, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, it's shorter to say PACE, PACE has uh, various backbench committees, including one on health. And for very many months, until the middle of last year, uh, their committee, with a rapporteur from this country, Christine Metafferty, uh, was working on a particular problem relating especially to women's health. Now, the background to this is, of course, we have successfully rolled back over the last few decades uh, reactionary laws uh, about abortion and such topics um, based on traditional religion. Although, of course, we have to recognize we've not completed that process. There's still no abortion in Ireland, there's still no divorce in Malta, and so on. Uh, but the result of our success has been that the defenders of traditional religious uh, rules have changed their policy, they've changed their tactics. Uh, and they are emphasizing now conscientious objection. Now, conscientious objection uh, is all very well, it's a good thing in principle. But what is happening is that, in particular, the Roman Catholic Church and its institutions are putting huge pressure on doctors, on anaesthetists, on nurses, on all manner of other people involved to register a conscientious objection to having any part uh, in carrying out abortions. For example, in Italy, in Poland, uh, in Italy in particular, the number of surgeons and anaesthetists who have registered conscientious objections has risen almost by half in the last few years. The tactic is to make, to leave the law allowing abortion, but make it practically impossible to actually get one. The PACE committee was looking at this problem and the need to regulate the use of conscientious objection. Their resolution, proposed resolution, uh, had a first paragraph, which I'll read to you. It said, the practice of conscientious objection arises in the field of healthcare when healthcare providers refuse to provide certain health services based on religious, moral, or philosophical objections, while recognizing the right of an individual to conscientiously object to performing a certain medical procedure, the Parliamentary Assembly is deeply concerned about the increasing and largely unregulated occurrence of this practice especially in the field of reproductive health care in many Council of Europe member states, and so on. It went on in like mode. This came up for a vote on the 7th of October last year. Complacency by our friends and our MEPs uh, led to a defeat of this by a well-organised and well-financed campaign by reactionary religious interests. The resolution that was passed in an amended form had a first paragraph which said, no person, hospital or institution shall be coerced, held liable or discriminated against in any manner because of a refusal to perform, accommodate, assist or submit to an abortion, the performance of a human miscarriage or euthanasia or any act which could cause the death of a human fetus or embryo for any reason. This was the stimulus, this defeat in PACE in October, was the stimulus for the small group of non-governmental organisations that forms the advisory board to the European Parliament Platform for Secularism in Politics, that is a backbench group of members of the European Parliament in favour of secularism, um, uh, to decide that something had to be done. The advisory board includes liberal religious organisations, as well as non-religious humanist secularist organisations, all though in favour of separation of religion and politics. And it wasn't just the PACE forum, but also the European Parliament and European Union consultations and, and 
forums connected with the Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe and so on. And it wasn't just abortion, but family planning and euthanasia or assisted dying, LGBT rights, religious privilege and exemptions from non-discrimination laws and so on that we were concerned about. The organised lobbying by our opponents has been effective and is increasingly effective and it has no counterpart on our side. Hence the invitations that were sent out last week to organisations across Europe uh, to join an alliance for a secular Europe as a sort of liaison and alert network based on an email group. It's a network for organisations, not for individuals. Um, member organisations of it will know which other member organisations are in it, but the names and the email addresses of the individual representatives uh, will be confidential. It's too soon to make any claims uh, for the Alliance, uh, as the invitations, as I say, have only been out for a few days. But any organisations that are represented here today and would like more information about the plans for the Alliance, please see me immediately afterwards or else send an email to admin at secular Europe, or one word, dot EU. Thank you very much.